Welcome to Flutter Teacher. Guys, in the last video, we have seen list view widget along with all its properties. In this video, we will deep dive into list view builder. So, without wasting time, let's get started. List view builder is the name constructor from list view class. It creates on demand scrollable list of widgets. Let's understand what do you mean by on demand or lazy loading of items in the list. When we create a list view containing thousand elements, irrespective of number of elements displayed on the screen, it will create thousand elements and keep them ready in a memory to get rendered on the screen. On the other hand, when we have list view builder containing thousand elements, instead of creating those many elements, it will only create the elements that your screen can display. As we scroll up or down, elements are created as required. Hence, it is called on-demand or lazy loading of items. Just in few minutes, I will provide practical proof for this. But before that, let's see how to use list.builder in the code. Item builder is a required property that needs a callback function having two different parameters. First parameter must be of type build context, which is used to identify the position of a list view in the widget tree and the parameter called index that is in the form of integer it identifies the index of each element in the list now inside this function we must return the widget that is going to create the design for each element inside this list view dot builder so here let me write some card here so let me paste the code here you can see here we have a card and as a child of the card we have the list style here inside that we simply have a title and for the title I am simply printing the item along with that I am printing the index here so that I will get the index of each element created on the screen. So let me save the code. You can see here items are created here means they are created on inside the screen and I can scroll down you can see here I can scroll down even I can scroll up here and you will observe now as I scroll down infinitely a number of items are getting created here. Now if you want that uh, there should be some finite number of items or what we want to have some fixed number of items here based on uh, some list or based on the data we are getting created then along with this item builder we can use one more property called the item count now for this item count let me write here 50 and let me save the code now you can observe now uh, as i can scroll here you can see here i'm getting the item zero okay, let me come to this item zero then item one two and i can scroll down you can see here at the end means uh, for this item 49 which is actually the item number 50 my list in and now I can scroll down in the list. So this is what the exact use of item count in the list view dot builder. Now let me explain practically what do you mean by this on demand or lazy loading of items. For understanding this, I have defined a function called get item that takes the index of each element. And in order to understand which item is created created in the memory, I have simply printed the item number of the console using the print function. Inside this get item, I am simply returning container with some margin alignment and some height here. And as a child of container, we simply have the text which is printing the item along with the item number in the form of index. So let's come inside this uh, list view. You can see here inside this list order builder, I am simply generating 20 number of items. And for this item builder, I am simply returning this get item function which has got this index for each element. So let me save the code and let me explain what will happen in this deeper console. So when I save the code, you can also now I have got 20 items. But you can see here, list dot builder haven't generated or it haven't created 20 items at once. In fact, it is only creating five number of items. And as I scroll down, you can observe now as I scroll down here, you can see now the items are getting created. You can see here item number five, item number six, seven. And as I scroll down again, the number of items are getting created. And we'll again observe now. Okay, let me just clear this deeper console. And as I scroll up here, you can see now again items are getting created as i'm scrolling up so what is happening here as we scroll up and as we scroll down items are getting created uh, based on the requirement and this type of concept or it is actually called the lazy loading or loading on demand of item in the list view dot builder use of list view dot builder is preferred for the list of large or infinite number of elements because it is specially made with optimization of memory and performance so that building is called only for those children that are actually visible. Let me save the code and let's understand what will happen here. We can observe now we have item 0, 1, 2 and item 3 is also rendered on the screen. And that's the reason uh, we should get the 
call for this get item for the item 0 to item 3 only but what is happening here you can observe here on the debug console item number 4 is also got uh, called the reason for this by default list order builder has some uh, cache extend and that's the reason it uh, will have space for one more element to get rained on the screen and for that reason this uh, item number 4 that is the fifth item is created list view has the visible area which is called as the viewport where items are displayed Cache extend allows us to decide the area before and after the visible area to catch the item that are about to become visible when users scroll up or down. For example, consider in our list order builder each element takes the size or the height of 200 pixels and the value for cache extend is exactly 200. So in this case what will happen to a list view dot builder can catch only one element at the bottom and one element at the top as we have the cache extend same as the height of the element in the list view. On the other hand, if you change the value of cat extend to say 400, so what will happen? As each element has the height of 200, so that your list order builder is now capable of holding two elements in the uh, bottom side, that is at the end of the visible area, and it can hold two elements at the leading edge or say before the visible area. So that is what the use of cat extend. So if you increase the value of catch extend, we can simply increase the capacity of your list or builder to hold the number of elements which are about to get rendered on the screen before and after the visible area. Let's see the practical use of this catch extend. Let me make the value of catch extend to 0 and when I save the code, you will observe now only item number 0, 1, 2 and 3, they are uh, means they are only created in the memory and item 4 is not at all created here. And when I scroll uh, here down, you can see here item number 4 is created and as I scroll, items are getting created here. And now let me just uh, again just clear the debug console and you will observe now, I have this item number 7 here. And as I scroll down, you can see item number 6 has got created and as I scroll again down, we will get this item number 5 and so on. So as we have the value of cat extend to 0, okay, it won't have any space reserved for any element. I have made the value of this cat extend to 600 and you can observe now. Only the item number 0, 1, 2 and 3, they are arranged on the screen. But even we have the item called for the item number 4 and 5. And as I scroll down here, you can observe now we have got this item 6. And again, we have the item 7, 8 and so on. Now, let me just erase the debug console and you will observe the change now. When I scroll down here, what will happen here? You will observe now we have the call for this item number 2. You can observe now we have this item number 4. It means item number uh, 5. It means uh, item number 4, item number 3, they are still in the memory and it has now just created item number 2 for getting uh, printed on the screen. And as I scroll again, you can see here, it has got the call for this item number 1. So I can again scroll down here, you can observe now, we have the item 8 here, but it has called the function for this item number 11. So this is what the use of cache extend. Let's see how we can create this UI by using the list dot builder with some predefined data for managing the user we have the model class called user containing name image and profession and we have a simple constructor here in order to just create uh, some sample data here i have defined uh, the list of users here that contains 20 different users you can imagine this user as the data that you are getting from some sqlite or maybe you are getting data from server or say from your firebase so let's understand how we can use this list here I have simply just imported this uh, user uh, inside this um, uh, file here. You can observe now inside this list dot builder the number of items that we want to build based on the length of this user. That's the reason I use here say user dot length. And as the item builder, I'm simply using the list style here. And in order to create this image, what we have done, we simply have the circle out there. And as a background of this one, I use here asset image, and I'm simply using here users uh, of a specific index dot the image. Now, when we are working with uh, the real-time application with Firebase or server, instead of using this asset image, uh, in that case, we'll use the network image, and uh, we'll have the same code term. And in order to print the name, I have simply used title with say text and having the user of specific index with the name. And for the subtitle, I'm simply using the profession of user. I can simply scroll down to get the uh, remaining elements in the list. All the remaining properties of list dot builder are similar to that of list view, and we have already covered those in the list view video. So, if you want to learn all those properties, don't forget to watch that video. 
Link is also there in the description. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video. If you really found this video helpful and knowledgeable, then don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.